as the battle began, most of the students immediately ran away upon seeing Chu's fiery explosion. However, Arna scolded them to maintain the special formation as planned. This reinvigorated their spirits upon hearing Arna's words. The forces led by Clay and Cassim converged to create a defensive formation with shields to counter Chu. When Chu attempted to attack one of the forces with his tail, they dispersed to avoid the assault, but this left Chu's rear vulnerable, giving the other force an opportunity to strike. So far, everything was going exactly like their training. The headmaster, observing the battle, was also impressed with their strategy of exploiting Chu's blind spot. However, defeating a dragon wasn't going to be as simple as that. Chu's scales were impervious to ordinary attacks. For now, their priority was to heal the injured students. Meanwhile, the attacking forces waited for the right moment to make their move against Chu. When the opportunity arose, Sophie leapt towards Chu to strike his head, while Arnest used her sword to unleash a fiery attack. Although the attack seemed to have some effect, it was uncertain if it would be enough to defeat Chu. As it turned out, Arnest's recent attack was not their main objective. Due to the smoke from the flames, Chu was unable to see his surroundings clearly, and suddenly, the ground beneath him collapsed as he tried to move. They had set a trap for him. The headmaster doubted Blade's intention to show a fair fight. Blade argued that it would indeed be unfair if the trap was set before the battle began. However, the trap was created right after the battle commenced. Throughout the fight, the other students were merely buying time for Leonard to dig the trap quickly. Nonetheless, the headmaster wasn't convinced that such a plan alone could lead them to victory. Blade understood this, and from this point on, the real battle would begin. The healed students now launched another attack on Chu. Meanwhile, for some reason, Asmodeus within Arnas' sword seemed to be struggling to continuously release flames. Nevertheless, Arnas paid no heed and forced Asmodeus to keep producing the flames. Chu then attempted to escape from the trap, but Arnas blocked his path with the forcibly unleashed fire from Asmodeus. Due to Arnas' attack, Chu fell from the sky. Sophie seized the opportunity to use her created hero power of gravity manipulation to further strike him down with force. Finally, Arnest would finish him off with her finishing blow. However, this attack was not solely Arnest's doing. The other students channeled their magic energy to strengthen her. Not only the top-ranking students but also those from lower ranks did the same. They shared the same feelings, wanting to become Chu's friends. The tremendous and powerful flames were directed by Arnest towards Chu, leaving him no chance to evade. After being hit by the attack, Chu reverted to his human form. He appeared somewhat sad for losing and felt that he had disappointed Blade by being a weak child. However, Blade certainly didn't see it that way. Chu's words weren't true, it wasn't Chu who was weak, but humans were stronger. With that, Chu finally acknowledged that they were stronger. This meant that now they could be his friends. Initially, Chu had arrogantly tried to befriend them to cover up his embarrassment, but after Blade's admonition, Chu sincerely wished to be friends with them. The next day, the headmaster was overseeing the construction of new facilities in the arena. He was pleased with the students' progress and wanted to prepare combat training that simulated real-life conditions. Using the lost magical knowledge called science, he planned to create a virtual reality facility. Meanwhile, Chu was having a meal with Blade and their friends. Claire was feeding Chu, playfully teasing her. During the meal, Blade noticed a change in Arnest. Somehow, Arnest had become chubby. The others had already noticed it, but they didn't mention it directly. Blade, on the other hand, bluntly called her chubby without considering Arnest's feelings. Arnest felt embarrassed and ran away from the cafeteria. Blade couldn't understand why the others thought he was being mean. They said that maybe Arnest had dumped Blade. Since then, Arnest had locked herself in her room for three days. Blade was visibly distressed about the situation, interpreting dumped as Arnest not wanting to be friends anymore. Jessica worsened the situation by saying that Dumped actually meant Arnas no longer wanted to be friends with Blade. Hearing this, Blade panicked, he still wanted to be Arnas' friend and planned to apologize. However, Claire believed that Blade didn't know why Arnas was angry with him, and if he apologized without understanding the reason, Arnas might get even more upset. So, Claire, Jessica, and Sophie decided to accompany him to Arnas' room. Chu and Leonard joined them as well. When they arrived at Arnas' door, Jessica tried knocking and informed her that Blade came to apologize. But they received no response. Reluctantly, Jessica used a lockpick to force open the door. Once inside, they heard Arnas crying in the dimly lit room. They turned on the lights and saw Arnas devouring donuts greedily. 
Arnest explained that she had been feeling extremely hungry since her battle with Chu the other day. That was the first time she tried donuts, and she had been addicted ever since. Blade, still worried, asked if Arnest had dumped him, but it turned out that was not her intention. She just didn't want to show her body like this to him. Blade felt relieved to know he wasn't dumped. Rather carelessly, he decided to leave as if all the problems were solved. Claire and Jessica tried to encourage Blade to at least say something encouraging to Arnest. However, Blade, not fully understanding the situation, praised the deliciousness of the donuts. In this situation, Claire and Jessica handed it over to Leonard to set an example. Despite Leonard's well-put words, Arnest was still upset because he called her chubby. Blade made another attempt, advising that the issue could be resolved with the help of their friends. Blade planned to train Arnest's body back to its slim form. The next day, they started with a morning run. Right from the start, Arnest struggled to keep up. Nevertheless, she persisted, hoping to burn calories. They followed it up with squats, pull-ups, and push-ups. During the lunch break, Claire and Jessica prepared a special diet meal for Arnest, consisting of half a boiled egg, a slice of meat, and two broccoli pieces. Arnest needed to cut down on her calorie intake. After all the exercises, Arnest took a hot shower and then weighed herself. Unfortunately, her weight didn't decrease. However, she had been training to gain muscle mass, and soon she might start losing weight. The next day, Arnest had an extreme idea. To be safe, they carried it out on a new training area with strong magic barriers, so there would be no damage if the plan failed. Blade accompanied her as a precaution, and if everything went as planned, Arnest asked him to praise her. With that, Arnest began chanting a spell to awaken the power of Asmodeus. A fire tornado engulfed her, and slowly, Arnest's body began to slim down. Sophie, Chu, Claire, and Jessica rushed to the scene, concerned about the massive flames. They wanted to save Arnest, but Blade urged them to trust her. Shortly after, Arnest regained control. However, she now had horns and some fire-related attributes on her body. Suddenly, Asmodeus spoke through her. He was proud that Arnest could achieve this form. Previously, only first-generation users could accomplish it. The destroyed parts of Arnest's body transformed into fire, empowered by Asmodeus. Her body became immortal and impervious to physical attacks. Asmodeus was eager to find enemies to burn with its power. However, Arnest replied that the fire was better used to burn her fat. She did it as part of her diet to burn calories. Though feeling her dignity had been trampled upon, Asmodeus couldn't deny the truth. The weakness of the demon form was its high energy consumption. To sustain this form, one million calories per hour were needed. Arnest was delighted because she no longer needed to exercise every day to burn calories. Suddenly, she felt dizzy and collapsed. It turned out Arnest was just hungry. She was so famished that even in her demon form, she became unruly and even grew a tail. Claire tried to encourage her not to lose herself in the demon form. Surprisingly, Arnest could still remember Claire's name. Not only that, Arnest wanted to eat Claire because she looked delicious. Arnest started approaching Claire on her hands and feet. In such a situation, Blade had no choice but to use some force. He unleashed the three-sword dragon vanish technique, the wind version, to revert Arnest to her original form. When she woke up, Arnest found herself naked and being carried by Blade. As promised, Blade praised her for successfully executing her plan. That night, Blade, Sophie, Claire, Jessica, and Leonard visited Arnest's room to check on her condition. To their surprise, they found Arnest devouring donuts in her brutal manner. Blade had somewhat expected this. Arnest tried to convince them to let her eat the donuts, as she would slim down again after using her demon form. However, they regarded it as an excuse of someone who was lazy. Arnest still insisted on sticking to her method. 